AMD sets even more records. Ubisoft wants you to watch more ads while you're playing your games, and AMD's CPUs had this hidden secret all along. We just didn't pay attention. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, November 27th, 2023, also known as Cyber Monday. Reese will be having a special live stream on Twitch for that, as well as an extra long UFT deals that you'll find happening later in this episode. But speaking of extra long, that's the points numbers that have been going into AMD's latest Threadripper chip, especially when we're benchmarking it and liquid nitrogen overclocking it. And now after just a couple more days, it has been pushed to even greater heights, hitting over 6.2 gigahertz on 96 cores. And you can see from this screenshot here, the Threadripper Pro 7995WX hit a maximum temperature of negative 18 degrees Celsius. So a lot of power being pumped through this, and it means that it's scoring way higher higher than the previous records that we've been discussing. 140,000 was what we talked about initially when these Threadripper chips came out. Then it got pushed to being 186 by AMD themselves. And then it got pushed to being over 200,000 by Elmore last week. And now just a few days later, it is at over 210,000 points in Cinebench R23. The insane engineering that AMD has put into their Threadripper chips, not only to get 96 cores to work on a single gosh dang die with all of the chiplet stuff, but then also adding in the fact that it can handle speeds this fast. I remember when Ryzen initially launched liquid nitrogen overclocking just a regular eight core chip, you were lucky to get close to six gigahertz. And now they're doing it on 96 cores. This is honestly incredible. And I just love when stuff like this happens, pushing the boundaries of what we can expect out of our processors. But in case you're looking to cool your CPU, regular one, not a thread ripper that that's running at that fast because I don't think the ice mist is gonna handle it, but today's video sponsor, Silverstone, has you hooked up with their new line of ice mist coolers. If you have a regular Ryzen 9, you have a regular Intel i9 or below that, these ice mists are gonna serve you well. These closed loop AIO coolers are meant to be best performing not only for your CPU, but also for the components around the CPU. Available in 240, 280, 360, or 420, they have an updated radiator pump and fans to all improve CPU cooling performance over their previous generation of AIOs so that you can push your latest Intel or AMD chip to its maximum potential. But it also has a unique water block design which allows you to stack 70 millimeter fans on tops with their fan modules known as the IMF-70. You can have them up to wazoo as they showcased at Computex. As long as your case can fit it, maybe you have an open air test bench and then your limit is your actual ceiling. These IMF-70s are there to help cool down components such as your VRM or making sure that the hot spots around the CPU are being being dealt with. You can check out the Ice Mist series of coolers as well as the IMF 70 editions down below at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video and you should definitely check those out for today's Cyber Monday. Additionally, let's talk about Intel's next generation of CPUs, not the current gen that's being cooled by Ice Mist, although I think Ice Mist can probably handle this. We've got some new details coming out about the integrated GPU that's supposed to be going into Arrow Lake, essentially confirming that it will be an updated version of what we're starting to see come out in Meteor Lake. So this is gonna be the XE LPG Plus, which what is currently being tested and we talked about last week, Intel's GPUs that we're finding in the mobile chips are beating out AMD's mobile chips, at least the 780M versus what's coming in the XE LPG right now. So getting a refresh is definitely on the cards for the desktop side of things. And we should start seeing that sometime next year. This does raise a lot of questions, specifically in the side of, could Intel start releasing APUs, right? Like I know that technically every Ryzen chip is now an APU because it has two graphics cores. And technically every Intel CPU is an APU because it's got graphics baked in. But I'm talking like give us a 5700G Intel i7 equivalent where you're getting like a good amount of performance that's backed up by a decent CPU. I think I would like to see it, especially if they do not do what AMD does, which is ruin the PCI Express lanes and make it so that when you do upgrade to a GPU, it's a worse experience overall. Maybe Intel could fix that, bring some competition to the APU market. I'm intrigued. 
I desire to see it. Now, there's gonna be more competition in the handheld market though, because One X has announced the price of their upcoming external GPU dock, the One X GPU, and with you getting a 7600M GPU, additionally getting a built-in SSD slotted right on into it, which they're calling it's the world's first portable eGPU with storage. It connects over Oculink and a 280 watt power supply. This thing will cost $599 in case that's of interest to you. They're gonna be launching their Indiegogo campaign sometime soon. And you can see there's some upgrade options, including the fact that you can add the SSDs yourself. But as somebody who's been getting more and more into handhelds as they've been starting to get hot and heavy, I like seeing stuff like this because it's some good competition on the market. And Greece is gonna compete with me for time on Hot News because he's got deals for you. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And happy Monday, everyone, Cyber Monday to be exact. We had a lot of great deals over on Black Friday with one of the most popular categories being monitors. And that seems to be the trend for Cyber Monday as well. Starting off with this LG 27 inch 1080p 100 Hertz IPS monitor going for only $119.99, making it $100 off. But then if you want to bump up those specs a little, you can grab this Acer Predator 27 inch 1440p 165 Hertz gaming monitor for only $199.99, making it $250 off. Then we have what is one of my favorite cases I've seen till date. That's the Fractal Design Terra specifically in the Jade. It just don't even question it. Just just do it, just do it. You know, you know you have to. But what won't fit in there is this ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4AC AIM4 ATX motherboard, which you can pick up for only $84.99, making it $40 off. But then something you can pair up with that is this AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, which is currently going for only $174, making it $275 off. And then lastly, we have this AMD Ryzen 9 7900X 3D, which is going for only $433, making it $166 off and one of the lowest prices I've ever seen it go for. But don't forget, we're going to be doing a Cyber Monday live stream over on Twitch and YouTube where we find and curate the best community source deals for Cyber Monday. So if you don't want to miss out on anything good, be sure to come and pop over, say, hey, maybe check out the deals doc that we're going to have. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thank you, Reese. Technically, UFD deals is just an ad. We typically don't get paid by the companies directly to talk about it, but we slip it in there anyways. And that's exactly what UBI soft did with Assassin's Creed. I realized slipping it in makes it seem like we do sponsored content that we don't disclose. That's not the case at all. We disclose whenever there's a sponsored spot on UFD deals. Very rare that it happens. That was my point. Bad segue. I'm sorry. Ubisoft putting ads into Assassin's Creed. They want you to buy the new Assassin's Creed Mirage. So they're slipping it into Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla. Whenever you go into the in-game menu this past week, it showed that there was a Black Friday ad for the latest Assassin's Creed Mirage. You can see this user who was playing the game right here, tried to go into the in-game menu, and they got greeted with a 20% off Black Friday sale coupon. Now, Ubisoft says that this was a technical glitch, that this should have only appeared at the homepage of the game, not when you're going into an in-game menu, but this also brings up a conversation of, should this be happening in games at all? The advertising side of things is starting to get more and more egregious. I mean, I'm not necessarily surprised considering Ubisoft also thought NFTs were a great idea, but I wanna hear from you, where do you draw the line in ads for your video game? So like every time I boot up Baldur's Gate 3, it has an ad for me to buy the deluxe edition of Baldur's Gate 3. I don't want it. I kind of don't like that that ad is there and I prefer that they got rid of it, but I kind of tolerate it. But then I also think back to, you know, I've played older games like Need for Speed Underground 2 recently, and then there's paid product placement everywhere. There's singular wireless ads. A Best Buy is in the background on the tracks in Need for Speed Underground 2. So it's clear that ads are in video games. I'm just curious where we draw the line. It turns out that Epic Games drew the line at getting acquired by Google because there's new court documents coming out in the Epic versus Google lawsuit, specifically about Fortnite being allowed on the Google Play Store, 30% cut, all of that. But it turns out that Google was actually in discussions to buy out Epic Games or at least purchase a majority stake in them so that they could have an exclusive hold on Fortnite for both Android. But at the time, back in 2018, they were looking at launching Google Stadia. So Fortnite could have potentially been a heavy hitter for Google on Stadia and potentially have driven a whole lot more people to the service. I doubt it, but it, it makes you think what could have happened. Kind of glad Epic Games said no, because even if they had Fortnite, I suspect that G Google Stadia wasn't long for this world. And what's short for this world is the amount of time it's going to take you to transfer the Call of Duty campaign. Do that in just a single second now, if 
you use this unlocked feature on AMD CPUs. Somebody was able to get a RAM disk running on the 3D V cache of the 7800 and 5800 X3D chips that AMD has out. You can see right here, the person who put this out on the internet got 182 gigabytes per second read and 175 gigabytes per second write. And this is wild. And a lot of people were speculating that this could have potentially been fake, especially because there's only 96 megabytes of L3 cache, you're not transferring a ton of data. How are you actually getting a RAM disk to interface with the L3 cache in the first place and then running a crystal disk mark benchmark? But it turns out after some investigation, this is real. And in fact, it was posted about back in February where somebody got this exact same thing to happen on the 5800X3D. And you can see that it got roughly the same speeds on the 5800X3D. So the 3D V cache doesn't appear to be any faster really from generation to generation, but this does bring up potential use cases that can move forward. This article from Tom's Hardware does have the details of what you would need to do potentially to benchmark your own X3D chip. If you do have one, you wanna see these wild speeds that are on there, but you could potentially check this out on a 7950X3D, which has 128 megabytes of cache, which again, what are you storing on that? I'm not quite sure but if you have one of the Genoa X processors that has 1.3 gigabytes of L3 cache, well, it probably is going to be slower because it's a larger amount, but it could potentially have some sort of niche use case. I'm not exactly sure how this could be used, but server needs are different than consumer needs, and somebody might actually be able to develop some sort of program that leverages this just a little bit better. Let me know if you're gonna try to ram disk your X3D chip if you have one down below in the comments. While I read from last week's comments, Comments. Let's look at Jaden Record saying, I'm not speaking for everyone, but I think I would have been fine to not have hot news today in favor for Brett to have a full Thanksgiving. I think it would have been cool to have either a full episode of UFD deal or even a compilation of shorts from everyone on the team today. Um, so the compilation would have been worse because that would have mean that everybody else needs to work instead of me. Additionally, I did have a full Thanksgiving. Had people over until I think 7.30, 8 p.m. Like we had friends and family over. They were hosted. I didn't kick them out early, never indicated that I needed to get to work. And then once everything was done and my responsibilities were over, I came down and worked, especially because Black Friday obligations, gotta get those sponsors in. That just being real, I run a business. Business owner decisions sometimes differ from the actual employee decisions and I wasn't gonna have Kyler come in, so I had to do hot news, which I will trade a lot of stuff to be able to come down on Thanksgiving after I'm stuffed full of turkey and feeling very happy about everything that happened during the day to film an episode of hot news and then move on with my life. I think that's an acceptable trade for how this job works out. Personally, I do very much value work-life balance. And so like I make sure that I am taking care of my familiar responsibilities as well as making sure that everything that I need to do in my life is happening. And then I also get work done. I balance it, I think pretty okay. Mr. Guillotine coming in and backing me up saying, I think a lot of people are forgetting that at launch, the 4070, much like almost all GPUs this gen was overpriced and it got lambasted for it. Prices drops on it since then. And it's definitely gotten more popular because because of it. But yeah, for the majority of its existence, it was not a well-received card, even if it was one more people bought just because the other options were even worse, at least until the launch of the 7800 XT. I think people forgot. I had to fight tooth and nail for people to think that the 4070 was worthwhile. Anyways, Broke Dad one coming in saying, I've noticed much of the stuff I bought on Tuesday is now on Black Friday deals for more money. It's quoted retail value has just been inflated more to make the percent off seem like a deal. I think that does happen, but also like a bunch of these companies are running deals all month long. It's not like Black Friday is a singular day anymore. It's like an event. And so I didn't see a whole lot of like the MSRP getting raised and then the deal price being lower. I just saw like some Black Friday deals were the deals that we've been getting for a while. And it's no longer like it used to be where there's a lot of big door busters where you have to be first in line in order to get some of this stuff at like 50 to 100% off. It has changed, but I mean, I think companies overall are making more money by having the deals run throughout the entire month. And then we got big dude coming in saying, I was sitting at my desk reading a bit of One Piece, zoned out listening to you talk about the news and it occurred to me during this part of the comment response that Kyler isn't there. I was wondering the whole time why hot news was so calm and not chaotic. I don't watch every day, but I've been watching more recently and it struck me as odd. I think you're like one of the first people to say hot news is calm with me. I think one of the most apparent criticisms I've seen of the content where I'm the one hosting is that my energy and my delivery 
of the way I speak is too chaotic for a lot of people or it's too high energy or it's too aggressive. So I appreciate the tone of calm. I will, I'll try to take that one in and I'll, uh, I'll take this episode of Hot News out to the upload to, so that my team cannot edit it. All right, we'll see you back here. Hopefully Tyler should be here for Hot News tomorrow.